All right, we're recording. Welcome to our team call. I'm so excited you guys hopped on. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this short, but I've got a really neat um, team call for tonight. And I was racking my brain, I was like, okay, what is gonna be most beneficial to everyone? Um, and I feel like a lot of times we know what to do in the business, but we lack the belief or the confidence or the time or experience or whatever it might be. Um, and so I just wanna give you some tools to equip you to better navigate your business with confidence. So um, all of the announcements are pretty much in your back office. I did post the announcements in our team page um, earlier today, so make sure to check those out. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and dive deep into the call. So the topic tonight is the four Ps of leadership. So I wanna know of those who are on the call, if you've ever struggled with mindset in your business. If you've ever struggled like feeling like you're a good enough coach? Anybody? Yes? Okay. So have you ever wondered if there's a magic sauce? Like there's something that just makes some coaches good at this and then some coaches just maybe aren't as great at this. I know that I've wondered that myself. Um, in, in this business, we often wonder what it truly takes to be successful. We see top coaches and other leaders who know it's possible but will we ever get there? So we're looking at them and like, are we ever gonna get to that level? Are we ever going to be there? What's different about them than is with me? Um, you don't doubt the business, you doubt you. So I wanna remind you that God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. You became a coach for a reason. There was something inside you that was tugged and you wanted to try for a dream, right? But what does it actually take to be successful. Tonight I want to share with you four P's of leadership, a roadmap of the crucial elements um, that you need to build a solid and thriving business. And at the end, I'll give you three goals that can help you get there. Does that sound good? Hopefully. Okay, so I was gonna put together a PowerPoint presentation because y'all know that I love those, but number one, I didn't have time. And number two, that's kind of a crutch for me. So we're gonna go with no PowerPoint. I'm just gonna speak some from the cup and some from my notes. But the first P is passion. Have you ever watched someone's Insta stories and they're just like captivating? Like you are just in tune with what they're saying. So Allie Upham is someone that's like that for me. She's a, one of the a very successful coach in the network. Um, and someone whose story I'm going to use here in a few minutes, she is just like, her energy is contagious. I watch her story and I'm like, I want to be your best friend. Like, let's be besties. You watch it. She's excited. She's passionate about what she does as a coach. So she, you watch her stories and you're like, Allie, whatever you're on, I want, I want that and then some. I want some of that joy or I want some of that energy. I want some of that passion, right? So the first P of leadership is passion. In this business, you cannot move forward without passion. You taking this business to the next level starts with you. Some of you are born leaders and some of you are learned leaders. And it doesn't matter which route you came from, but when you became a coach and you decided to start this business, you became a leader whether you realized it or not. You chose to step into that leadership role. Your job as a coach is simple, okay? Transfer purpose, passion, optimism, and belief, all right? So I'm gonna break that down for you. So purpose is what we do as coaches. Passion is why we do what we do. Optimism is what it's going to do for your future. Belief that anything is possible in your business. You'll either create belief in yourself and your team, or you will create doubt. There's really not room for both. So you're going to have seasons where you're going to have more doubt and you're going to have more fear. And then there are going to be seasons where you need to lean into that passion and allow that passion and joy to drive you in your business when you maybe don't quite know what you're doing yet. Um, personal development is going is crucial in this arena when it's, when you're talking about passion. I know for me, when I was creating this team call tonight, I was like, I don't really know what to say. Like, I feel like I've said it all. I don't know how to provide value to you guys. But what did I do? I dove into personal development and I sought direction from other sources because I need to fill my cup up so I can be passionate and excited for you guys. And it's the same thing for you. Personal development is, is key. It's the difference between being a germ to your team or a dose of vitamin C and infusing your mind 
and our team with hope and purpose. So great leaders lead with overflowing positivity. If you are wired to see the world through doubts and struggle, take the time to dig deep into why that is and actively choose to shift that mindset every day. Your mindset will always begin and end with you. And I know that for me, when I first started this business, I was not the uh, poly positive that I might appear to be now. I was definitely someone who struggled with, oh man, this. I was a finger pointer. Everybody else had an issue but me, okay? I was like, you're the problem. You need to fix yourself, and then you can come back to me, and we'll talk about it. Um, but through personal development and personal growth, I realized how much that I have room to grow. And because I'm working on myself, I'm able to be a vitamin C instead of infusing our team with germs. Because if the leader's negative, then the whole dang team's going to be negative, and ain't nobody got time for that. Um, so great leaders lead with overflowing positivity. So the one thing that you can do wrong, okay, when you are, when, when we're talking about passion, um, is that you're, well, let me back up and say, your passion is going to come and go. It's not going to be a never ending surge of gushing joy that comes out of you for coaching. It's going to ebb and flow. But what happens when your passion slips? Maybe, let me give you some examples. So let's say you were really wanting to reach Emerald and you were like so dead set on reaching Emerald by April 1st and you're just not there. Or maybe you really wanted to reach Success Club and it was really important to you, but it's been a really hard month and nobody wanted to hop on board. In these occasions, passion tends to slip and passion tends to go away and it's not as exciting because it's the mundane and the everyday um, but the one thing that you can do that will really destroy your progress as a coach is to turtle shell our instinct is to be like oh I, I'm terrible I'm gonna turtle shell and I'm, I'm no longer a good coach because I didn't reach that goal that's that is the worst thing that you can do when you are struggling the the best thing that you can do is to lean into your team and to lean into your support system when you just want to quit or when you're having a hard day or you're feeling unmotivated. That's what having a team as incredible as ours is can do for you. Um, so allow the team to be a place where you can depend on them, build, let them build you up when you're down and just don't turtle shell. The second P is perseverance. So they say that you, you might have heard the saying, be here in a year. But the thing about being here in a year is that if you're in the same place in your business today as you were one year ago, you're not going to want to do your business anymore because you're not going to be motivated. You're not going to feel inspired. You're not going to have passion. Um, and so perseverance is where it comes into play in that year's time. We have to really hone in on, on what your activities are when the going gets tough. So your coaching is gonna be a roller coaster, okay? So I wanna tell you the story that I heard today and I was like so blown away and so dang inspired because even now I kind of look at ranks and things like that. And I'm like, man, what am I doing wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Um, and, and it's not this like end goal, like, reaching five star is not this end goal. Just because I reach five star doesn't mean I'm done coaching. Like, okay, we move on. Like we keep growing. We keep adding to our team. We keep inspiring people. But, um, with Allie Upham, so she's a superstar diamond. If you don't know what that is, that's the highest rank you can reach. That's 15. She personally has 15 diamond coaches underneath her. And she held that 15 diamond for six weeks in order to hit superstar. Now it's a crazy big accomplishment. I have no idea how people reach that because there are so many moving pieces. I think it's so inspiring. Um, but you also with it, if you get it in the quarter, you get a $30,000 bonus. So, I mean, it's, there's good incentive to be one. Um, but a 15 star, she went from 15 star diamond. She qualified, reached it. Woohoo! Go reached. Everything's awesome. And like three weeks later, she went from 15 star to four star. And the next week she went to two star and she wanted to murder her whole team. And I say that because it happens to, like it's just the ebb and flow of the business. So the business is a roller coaster. 
and there are some really beautiful parts and it's like any business like you go to work and there are probably things at your work that you love there are probably things at your work that you just don't love and there are going to be seasons at work that are harder and there are going to be seasons at work that are not and it's the same thing with your coaching business um, so you have to enjoy the way up which is your struggle so on your roller coaster it's the way up right you have to celebrate the peaks. So that's when you reach your goals. You're excited. Yeah, I hit success club or yeah, I hit diamond. I've been working so hard on this. This is so exciting. Um, and then you have to hang tight with that second P, perseverance, um, in the twists and the turns of the roller coaster. And, the, and you're, you're upside down and you don't know which way is up and which way is down. And you're trying to figure out what you want your coaching business to look like. And you have to hang tight with perseverance. At the end of the day, those that persevere always go back to their why. When they lose their rank, so for me, for example, I am a lifetime two-star diamond, currently a paid one-star, so we have dropped rank. Um, and at the end of the day, when I, when I lose my rank, what's my why, okay? At the end of the day, when, when Success Club is hard, when you have a month where you're like, Oh my God, nobody wants to, nobody wants to sign up this month. What is wrong with me? Like what, there's gotta be something wrong with me. What's your why? When you feel stuck and unmotivated and like, you don't care, like you don't know how to get out of that place. What's your why? Why did you become a coach? I signed up to have a legacy for an opportunity to make an impact, to change someone's life. Like I, like like Jen, my coach, had changed mine. It wasn't about the dollar signs. It was, I didn't sign up going into this saying, I sign up today and I'm gonna be a five-star team. Like, I didn't even know what five-star, I didn't know what Success Club was when I signed up. I was just like, I love this, I need to help people. And that was my original why. And so you have to persevere clinging to that why through the roller coaster of what coaching is. Coaching is an emotional pendulum, okay? So on one hand, you have this awesome, so like you reach the goal and you're just, everything's amazing, you hit diamond, you like hit SE 20, you are like, everybody in your clientele is losing massive amounts of weight, everything is awesome. And then all of a sudden, swoosh, everything goes up to the other side and oh my gosh, what the heck is happening in my business? Everything is going to crap. I don't know what I'm doing. And so you have these two opposite sides of the pendulum and you're constantly going back and forth and back and forth, right? What I want to challenge you to do is to keep that pendulum swinging small, okay? What do I mean by that? I mean, don't get really upset when you're struggling to hit Success Club one month. You just say, okay, this month is harder. I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to work towards it. And so then the struggle is just a little bit toward on the pendulum, on the struggle side. If you have a new coach that signs on and they are so excited about this business and they're, you think they're going to be a rock star and they're going to be on fire, you get excited. We want to still celebrate, but you keep your pendulum swings small because then the difference between the two extremes isn't going to feel as big and those setbacks aren't going to feel as big. It doesn't mean we're not going to celebrate. It just means, yes, I hit success club. All right, what's my next move? And you just keep working because success club isn't the be all end all. There's still the first of the month that comes the very next day and you're like, okay, well, let's start right over and, and you have a new month to start afresh. So keeping your pendulum small is important. Um, if you don't stabilize your emotions in those hard moments, you're going to want to quit. And instead, I want to challenge you to persevere, stick around when it counts, and keep your head down and keep working. The third P is perception. What do you perceive your business as? This phrase can change your life. Act as though I am. Okay, so what does that even mean? You have to act as though you already are. For example, does a, so I would say I am a five-star elite coach. I'm not, I'm, there's, oh, we're not, we're not all more close, but I am a five-star elite coach. And you start, you put yourself in that mindset that you've already reached your goals. So when I think about that, does a leader spend an hour scrolling Instagram stories? Do they go through and watch 16 different stories in a row? Do they hop on Facebook and scroll Facebook to see what everybody's doing? No, a leader hops on and they blast out their invites, they crush their power hour, they add to their network, they listen to a training, and when they have some time later, 
they hop on Insta stories and they plug in and they have some free time. But a business owner, a leader, their, their perception is that they are on their social media to build a business, to build an empire, to treat their business as a business. Um, so does a leader focus on the problem or finding a solution? So for me, um, I would have been faced with a lot of problems in my business. I don't have an upline. I have no support, nobody above me. I have no way of knowing um, you know, how to navigate this business. So everything that I teach this team is self-taught because I don't have someone guiding. Now that could be an easy way out and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not good at this. I'm peace. Now, granted, I would never do that because I want to be home with my kids, but that would be a great example of how I can focus on the struggle or I could turn that problem into a solution and be an independent learner and figure it out. Um, so your perception has to shift. I earn a thousand dollars or more a week right now. My first paycheck was $14. Nobody in this business starts out, starts out special. I made $14 and then didn't make another check for three months. Okay. So if you're someone who got a check and then didn't make some more for a couple of months, you are not alone. That's my story. Um, when I truly launched my business, I continued to act as a leader, even though I was not one yet. I never stopped trying new things and flopping. I never stopped sharing and I showed up every freaking day when I didn't feel like it. I acted as if I was already that five-star elite team making a six-figure income. I have kept that as my mindset from day one um, because I wanted to act as if I was already making that um, and because that perception is my choice. My actions were those of someone changing thousands of lives, even though I wasn't. My actions were those of someone who was a success club, who that's a dangerous word, success club all-star legend. And if you don't know what that is, that basically means 24 straight months in success club. Even though at that time, I wasn't. Your actions can be that of, insert your goal, goal. You have to ask yourself, what would the person that has already achieved that goal be doing? Because when I do those things, I'm growing into the person who will reach those goals. So if someone who's a five-star, six-figure earner, they're not going to spend the time on social media scrolling. They're not going to make excuses for not sending invites. They're not going to make up reasons why they don't want to listen to the national wake up call. They didn't have time to do their workout or they're not product of the product and they're not showing their results and they're not getting results in their journey. A leader is going to be all those things, even if you're not quite there yet. There are two categories that your goals should never fall into. The I want to blank and I hope to blank. That automatically, it, and this goes for your clients too. Like when I, when my clients say, I hope that I can lose two pounds by Saturday. I'm like, no, you are already putting doubt in your mind. You're already enabling yourself not to reach that goal. It is the same thing as a coach. I hope to be that rank by summit. I want to be this goal by next week. I hope to hit success club. There should be an I am. I am a five-star elite coach. I am a six-figure earner. I am a business owner. Am I any of those things yet? Heck to the no, I'm not. But you know what I am? I'm going to continue to keep my mind in that leadership mentality because that is my perception that that starts the uh, train for success in my mind. Um, now with that correct mindset, I show up and I work like I already am that goal and that accolade is going to be given to me one day. So the fourth P is push. Um, so this is kind of a common term that you'll probably hear is you hear a push season. This is, for example, this is something if you were working really hard, so Summit is a great example. At Summit, you get recognized um, for different ranks. You get recognized for success in your business. Um, it's just a really great tool to use to set a goal. Um, but there's no goal that was achieved by accident. So every single goal that you're going to set is going to require some kind of push. If it's just success club, that is a goal, and it's going to require some push to, to get there. And I will tell you the first two years I'm on, this is year three. Um, it'll be four years next January. I think if I did my math right. And only after I got past year two, 
okay? The first two full years of never missing a power hour, never missing a day posting, never stopping sharing my journey, never stopping getting results, two full years. And now I'm at the place where Success Club isn't as hard, but there are still months that are a little bit tricky. And so if you are consistent, you persevere, you have that perception of yourself that you're a leader and you're showing up every day doing the activities. When you head into a push season, you're going to find that your goals are going to be a little bit easier to achieve. But every goal is achieved with a push. It doesn't just happen. If you hit Success Club 10 because you got kick butt results from a program, you didn't just happen to get kick butt results from your program. You intentionally worked hard in your fitness program so that you could share your transformation and you hit those numbers because you worked hard and you pushed for that physical goal. You didn't just have, or Two Star Diamond didn't just happen for me. And I'll, I'll share this story. So um, when we were in qualifications, so the way it works, if you don't know, is when you're the, the, the lead of the team is try and get the team to get to the next rank. Um, you all have to hold your rank for six weeks. So we all in our downline had to hold for six weeks. And that is so freaking stressful. I don't even know how we did it with two, much less if we were going to try it with five, but God will, God will provide one day. Um, so two and the last, it was, the, it was literally the last night, you guys, like I was about, and it was not my diamonds fault. It would have been on me that we would have lost that last week of qualification. And I was like, heck freaking no, we did not come this far to, and so I could have said, oh, one of my coaches went inactive the last day that I had to qualify. They went inactive. They didn't purchase ecology like they said they were going to. I can't control that. That's not, I mean, that that's them. And so I could have taken the approach of, oh man, this sucks. It works so hard. I don't, I just, man, it just sucks. I was like freaking no. And I put my head down. I looked at my husband. I said, I need you to cover the kids tonight. I am making this happen. And to the minute, like I ended up having to like put through an appeal and all this stuff because they were trying to say that I didn't do it on time. To the minute, 11.57 before midnight, I signed the one coach that I needed. I worked my butt off that night because I was so tuned into that push and committed to the goal that I had set for myself. And I didn't want to let myself down. Um, and I'm so proud of that. Like, we're a lifetime two-star team because of that. Um, so that's just an example. Um, Success Club All-Star Legend, that's what I am right now, 24 months consecutively with no breaks in Success Club. That did not just happen. There were so many months. Uh, it was like the last two days of the month, and I was like blasting out invites like it was my job because that was the one goal. I didn't know how to set goals. I didn't know how to do rank. I didn't know how to lead a team. I didn't know how to run a challenge group, but you know what I didn't know how to do? I knew how to send an invite. And I knew how to get somebody signed up to be a challenger in my challenge group. And I said, if that's my one controllable, then I'm going to reach that goal. And there were many, many months in that first two years that it was down to the wire the last day of the month. And I was hustling to reach that goal. You have to set a goal with a close deadline when you're pushing. And that grind and that push is how you make it a non non-negotiable. So two star was a non-negotiable. Success club is a non-negotiable for me. When you set a goal, there's no quitting, just like I shared. That last day of the month with no success club, you have two options. You can say, oh, this month was hard. I struggled. I didn't reach it. It's, oh, well, I'll try again next month. Or you can say, this is my goal. There's no quitting. I realize that I'm telling you this and it's March 25th and there's like, what, five days left in the month? There's five days left in the month. If you have 25, if you have five conversations a day for the next five days, that's 25 people. If you need one challenge pack, do you think if out of 25 people you can find one person to help? The answer is probably yes. So that is all about a belief. Like, do you actually believe that you can reach Success Club? Do you actually want to reach Success Club? Is Why does that... And then that goes back to why. Why does that matter? Why does it matter to you to reach that goal? Maybe because it's the one goal that you know that you can control that you know that's going to propel your business forward. Or maybe you were like me. I didn't know why Success Club mattered. I was like, I had my upline at the time. My upline was active. She's like, Rachel, you need to hit Success Club. I was like, well, why? She's like, you just need to hit Success Club. I was like, fine. I'll just hit. I didn't understand why. 
didn't make sense, but that's how you compound your income and your income goes on a steady growth track. And so that's, I'm glad I trusted her. Um, but that, that was a side note. Um, so you can't just say, oh, well, it didn't happen. You don't give up until the time runs out and the countdown clock is, is at zero. So where is your fight? Your goals will not happen haphazardly. And you have that route to take of say, oh, this didn't happen. But what, friends, what is the worst thing that could happen? You push for success club or you push for emerald or you push for diamond or you whatever it is that you're wanting to achieve. What, or let's take it to your health and fitness. Let's say you want to lose five pounds. What's the worst thing that can happen? You lose four pounds. You hit success club four instead of six. You had a ton of conversations and realized that you were inspiring more people than you, than you thought you were. You changed one person's life through Beachbody On Demand that you never would have talked to if you weren't pushing for that goal. That's an opportunity for you to propel yourself and your business forward. And you can either let that mindset of, of quitting get in your way, or you can find the inner fighter and go all in and work towards that goal. So obviously goals don't happen haphazardly. So how do we set goals? I'm going to give you three goals um, that you should have accomplished between now. The first one is now and the end of the month. And then the other two, um, well, the first two are between now and the end of the month. And then the other one is by the middle to the first quarter. I'm doing this in 90 day time, time span. So three things that because a lot of you on here, majority of you are newer coaches. And so you probably don't even know what goal to set. You're like, okay, Rachel, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And I'm about to do that for you. So number one is success club. I don't know where I have literally have not checked my back office. I have no idea where everybody is at right now. Uh, I was trying to do leaderboards this weekend and it didn't pan out because the back office was busted apparently. Um, and so success club is the first goal. That's the one thing you can control. The second goal is to never end a month without bringing on two new coaches. So your goal is to, to sign up and to become Emerald brand new every single month. So I know if I, because here's the thing, you want to build a strong foundation. So let's say you're Emerald right now. And if one person skips them, maybe they didn't drink their Shakeology on the weekend and they don't need next month's order, they skip and you lose rank. If you are reaching Emerald every month over and over, you're going to build a stronger foundation for your business and you're going to grow your income. Um, but that's just a really great goal is to bring on two new coaches. They don't have to be business builders. They can just be someone who's wanting to save some money on their shakes or their supplements each month. The third goal, and all y'all are going to take, y'all going to all stroke out. It's fine. Don't you will hopefully love me after this anyways, is diamond by June 15th. If you are duplicating your business, two coaches every month, <laughs> Stephanie, I see you. Um, if you are duplicating your business and you're reaching success club through discount coaches, you are going to naturally build to diamond way quicker than you think you are. People get so tied up in the whole, I don't have emeralds and I don't have this and I don't have that. You just build, like you put your head down and you work and you say, okay, I have this goal and this is why, write out why, what is it you're wanting to accomplish and why are you wanting it to accomplish it? And then you put your head down and you work. So that third goal is diamond by June 15th. Um, so again, what's the worst thing that could happen? You sign up six new coaches instead of eight. How freaking awesome would it feel to have signed up six coaches? and you are pushing for diamond. That's six, closest, six coaches closer than you are right now. What if you hit success club four and you worked your butt off and then come the first of, this is what I've had happen, come the first of the month, you have three people who met, find, respond back to your message like, hey, yeah, I'm interested, and you lock in success club within the first two days of the month. So I'm just gonna challenge you that those are the three areas to set some goals in your business this month. Then I'm going to leave you with this. Build your business with passion. That's the first, first P. Persevere on the roller coaster ride because it's going to be a process. Choose your narrative and shift your perception and push the doubts out of your mind as you grind toward your goals. Okay? So that's the four principles of leadership. And that's all I've got for tonight. Does anybody have any questions, feedback? comments, concerns, Rachel, I quit. I'm not going diamond by June 15th. You're crazy. Don't do that. Please don't do that. 
Okay, if nobody has any questions or anything, then I'm going to go ahead and end this call right at the 30 minute mark. I think you guys are awesome. The fact that you're here on a Monday night taking time to work on your goals, it's my job to instill belief in you that if I can take, give you anything to take away from this call is that someone who is not a speaker was the, was the girl who ran out of the spelling bee crying because she's misspelled the first word. I mean, I don't public speak. I was homeschooled, so I mean, kind of made sense. But I don't public speak. I'm not naturally gifted at that. And here I am teaching you guys on a team call. I was a girl who was allergic to sweating, who didn't like to work out, who loved to binge eat all the things. And here I've lost 140 pounds. So my job is to instill belief in you that there's nothing limiting you from your goals and that you are capable of anything that you set your mind to. And I believe that about every single person in this team. And I just want us to live up to our full potential, to remember our why, to press into the hard. You don't turtle shell when it gets hard that we're going to press into this team and we're going to do big things this year. So thank you guys for joining me tonight. I'll post the recording on the team page. Make sure you share it with a friend that wasn't here. Um, and we will see you next week. Topic to be determined as usual. <laughs> All right. Bye guys.